Okay, our next speaker is Jana, who's going to give us a talk about double diffusive mixing in the Arctic Ocean. Jana is a fourth year graduate student studying physical oceanography in the Department of uh, Geology and Geophysics. Uh, before coming to Yale, she studied the Indian Ocean at, I'm going to say the name of this university wrong, but Utrecht University in the Netherlands. And now Jana focuses on the Arctic uh, or the polar region. Uh, because scientifically she appreciates that the uh, activity in these regions have an important impact on global climate. Uh, her research has taken her around the world, including to an active volcano in Sicily, Italy. Uh, please help me welcome uh, Yana to the stage. Inflows, 
occupy upper 500 feet. Below these layers lie relatively warm and salty water masses originating from the Atlantic water in here. In the right, you see a typical temperature profile taken in this region of the Arctic Ocean. Y-axis shows depth, X-axis shows temperature. Such water mass distribution, that is, relatively cold and fresh waters, lying above warm and salt, gives rise to a layered structure in the ocean. You can envision this layered structure as a main layer cake. Here, again, by warm colors, I show warm waters, and by cold colors, I show cold waters. Now, if we send an ice-tethered profiler there, it would measure warm temperatures in the deep regions, here, it's warm, and cold temperatures in the shallow regions, here, it's colder. A depth of an individual layer is about 15 feet, and depth of the interface that links these layers as this white zone is about 4 inches. It is remarkable how these structures are stable. Individual layer can be tracked for over hundreds of kilometers or miles uh, across the Arctic Ocean. Therefore, um, and actually, if all it has been shown, if all this heat is released to the surface, all this heat that is stored in the uh, deep Arctic is released to the surface, sea ice will be done in a season and will not have uh, sea ice in winter months. Therefore, it is important to understand how these layers are formed and how much heat is transported through these layers. It is believed that these layered structures are formed by double diffusive mixing. So double diffusion is an instability process that can arise in a stably stratified ocean. By stable stratification, I mean the water mass distribution such that dense waters lie always below uh, large waters. In the Arctic Ocean, uh, salinity sets density. So salinity is a measure of how much salt we have uh, in the seawater. So salty waters are always denser than fresh waters, regardless of the temperature. And this is a unique case because for the rest of the global oceans, uh, density is set by temperature, but not for the Arctic. For Arctic salinity, what is better? Um, the main driver behind double diffusive mixing is the fact that heat diffuses much faster than salt. So now let's do this thought experiment. We've got cold and fresh layers lying above warm and salty, like in the Arctic Ocean. We take a parcel from cold and fresh layers and bring it down to warm and salty layers. Temperature of this parcel will adjust very quickly, but not salt. So this parcel quickly becomes buoyant um, and warm and fresh, and therefore it rises. On the way back, it overshoots its initial position, and now at this depth, this parcel adjusts temperature really quick, quickly, but not salt, and so this parcel becomes um, cold and relatively salty, because when it was in the bottom layers, it gave you some salt. So this parcel is denser. And it sinks. And this process repeats. So we're just saying that double diffusive mixing mixes the water and creates a mixed layer. Double diffusion operates on a molecular scale, on a very small scale. So every time when we observe a layered structure in the Arctic Ocean, it means that there are no other types of mixing rather than double diffusive mixing. And this means that deep Arctic is very quiet. So you can immediately ask, what happens with these layered structures 
in a dynamic, energetic feature enters the basin. And this is a nice transition to the next part of my talk, uh, where I'll introduce one of my PhD projects. So, an example of these energetic uh, structures might be an ocean basin. An ocean eddy is an analog to an atmospheric cyclone or hurricane. Essentially, it is a body of water that captures nutrients and heat, rotates, and propagates into the interior um, center of the basin from the boundary regions. So, as a part of my PhD research, I looked at the um, Arctic Ocean eddy that was found in this um, area of the Arctic Ocean. This figure shows a horizontal slice through an eddy, and this is a map. So uh, it is longitude here, longitude on x axis, and by color I show temperature. So it is um, an eddy that transfers uh, heat inside it from the boundary regions. White line shows a drift uh, trap of, uh, of an ice feathered profiler this device that sits on ice and travels with us. So if we plot temperature profiles along this drift track, we see a variety of double diffusive structures, these layered structures. Detailed examination of these layered structures and heat fluxes shed light on how double diffusive mixing um, compete with turbulent mixing associated with the AD rotation. Um, in setting the evolution of this eddy. It is important to know and understand the lifetime of these eddies because every time when these warm core eddies stop um, rotating, they release heat. And the knowledge of this vertical heat transfer is important for sea ice uh, position. There are still many open questions about the processes in the Arctic Ocean. To make progress, scientists need measurements. Remote locations of field sites in the Arctic require large research missions, which means many people, expensive creep time, high fuel costs, and sometimes sampling can be limited by sea ice conditions. An alternative to field expeditions might be automatic measurement systems like these ice feathered profilers that we discussed earlier, or satellite imagery techniques. And I would like to finish up with this slide that shows opportunities to get involved in this type of research. And if you have any questions about that, please find myself or Nicole Shidley, who is in the audience today, and we'll be happy to discuss more about that. Thank you.
this. Um, before in the previous uh, presentation, we said uh, when the previous uh, features, we said that there uh, the 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 temperature of the water, uh, the bottom get warmer if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. Then the top one. All this time, I thought because of the heat from the sun, the top always warmer than the bottom. So the source of the heat from the bottom of the sea. So what's the source of the heat? Right, a very good question. So yes, Arctic, uh, the Arctic Ocean is a, a unique place because it has very different vertical structures. Uh, and the source of this heat is the warm Atlantic water. So because the Arctic consists of two main water masses, cold and fresh that are mainly coming from the Pacific, and warm and salty that uh, is coming from the Atlantic. And so that's why uh, you have these interesting uh, unintuitive structures. So it's the, the, the current? Yes, okay. yes. Not the, the earth, not the bottom of the sea? Uh, yes, and in fact, um, I showed the temperature profile, and um, the deepest area that I showed was about uh, 1,500 uh, 1, feet, <laughs> but in fact, the depth uh, of the Arctic Ocean is about uh, 10, um, it's about 4 kilometers. So it's much deeper, so much, how, how much it would be? Um, it would be um, actually 10,000 10, feet. So the depth of the uh, Arctic Ocean is 10,000 uh, 10, feet. Uh, but I show the temperature profile only of the upper uh, 2,500 feet. So this heat is not at the very bottom. Uh, it's sort of like in the middle, in the like close to the upper parts, but not uh, at the surface. Let's take the other again.